Good evening. Hello, is this uh, Mr. LeBlanc? Oh, Felix. Yes, sir. This is Felix, and Austin is on the line as well. Welcome to the show. How y'all doing this evening? Doing well, doing well. Doing great. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule because, believe it or not, you definitely, uh, judging by some of the pictures you, I've seen of, uh, of what you've been doing, you, you, you definitely stay busy. <laughs> yes, sir. I stay on the road quite a bit. <laughs> but you know, I, I since Austin is definitely he's more familiar with you, you know, as you as, a, as you guys are friends, I'm going to let him kick it off first and go well, from there. Austin, we know fire with, away, um, with for people that who don't know, what exactly do you do? Uh, well, uh, I'm basically the lead ringside still photographer, um, something that's basically going by the wayside here and over the last couple of years. It's just some scenery occurrence with people that have just been continuous in their diligence to plug it in and take good ringside photography. Um, we're different than your camera person who are more stationary. We're a little bit on the more mobile side of the genre and so you you work so we talk about places that you worked you worked at, i mean took, took pictures and stuff in um places like alabama mississippi um a little bit of texas louisiana is that correct somewhat yes sir been uh covering the southern states from beaumont louisiana oh beaumont texas and galveston recently all the way across the state of louisiana the southern part up into Mississippi as far as uh, Kosciuszko, which is hop, skip, and jump away from Meridian up that way. Hmm. So, um, uh, what, uh, oh, go ahead. Also, I was going to say that, um, so how long have you actually been doing this? So, I mean, is this, like, I know it's not recent. I'm acting like I'm, I'm not the one who knows, you know, uh, just saying that people who don't know, how long have you, have you actually been taking these pictures around town everywhere? Uh, in the last three years, really just been focusing on it, but, you know, in previous years, back in the mid-80s, was always at a lot of shows throughout the South and taking single photos with, you know, back then it was just a click-and-shoot photography. And you know, I made my rounds through, uh, basically down through Houston uh, with Tugbo Taylor's crew, Warriors of Wrestling, which is now NWA Wow. Um, Humble, Texas had uh, TASW. We used to love going to those shows. Uh, Necro Butcher came out of there, and everybody knows Hot Stuff Hernandez, recently on TNA, came out of that way. He used to be known as the Tex Mex T Rex. (laughs) (laughs) And just, you know, throughout the years, it always had a little bit of photography bug in me, and always seem to find the best wrestling shows in the South on the weekends. And who were some of the uh, some of the guys that you enjoyed working with? Because I've seen a, a variety of pictures that you taken with uh, legends in, in wrestling, as well as some of the up-and-comers, as well as possibly future stars, as in my good buddy here, Alice Austin, as well. <laughs> but you've uh, taken a lot of pictures with a lot of different people, and I'm just curious, who were some of your favorites that you got to meet over the years? Oh, wow. Um, I would definitely have to say for somebody who grew up on Southern wrestling like myself and had a chance to see the AWA come up and, you know, these are sort of championship wrestling. You know, we grew up a lot with our Southern wrestlers and people in our families, you know, my stepbrothers, my father, my grandfather, they were all into the wrestling, so... Growing up, I'm, I finally got some chance to meet some of my favorites, like Bullet Bob Armstrong, oh, Adrian nice. Street, um, Shane Douglas, seen a few Rock and Roll Express recently uh, when they did their Southern tour down here in uh, New Iberia and uh, Plaquemines and Abbeville. Um, you know, Jerry the King Lawler was another one that you know when you get a chance to meet him and you're just like. You're not, you're another all, you know. You're just sitting there next yep. to a man that you watch because you grew up. Um, one man gang, you know. It's, it's a gentleman like that that really paved the way for a lot of the younger guys that weren't exactly with the best build. You know, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't be remiss not to say Jazz and Rodney Mack are 
local fan faves here in Lafayette. Uh, you know, that would have to go deeper into, you know, JYD and a lot of the other guys from back in the day, you know. Oh, Devon Eric, when I was in Dallas, you know, we grew up meeting all those guys. And, you know, Hacksaw Jim Duckins, another one that, you know, when you meet, you're just like, you can tell that that's a guy that's going to remember you the next time he sees you. Um, <laughs> Chavo Guerrero Sr., Chavo Guerrero Sr., you know, both of those guys have been all Chavo around Clash. Texas. All right. Yes, sir, the classic. And, you know, getting to meet Paul Bear and, you know, a lot of guys that, you know, just really did Percival Pringle, raising up a whole bunch of the people around this way, helping out with uh, Luke Hawks' promotion uh, at Sports here in the world recently before he passed away. Very cool, very cool. You had quite a career for yourself and met some great legends over the years. How I mean, have you actually – How what's the farthest that you were able to travel to to do these kind of shows? Well, I pulled a wild hair out of my bum and decided I was going to go from New Orleans to Union City, Tennessee for a big Legends matchup there. Oh, nice. Uh, that is a drive, too. You know, that was a big night. We had uh, Rikishi up that way. We had um, Jared King Lawler. Um, one half of the Rock and Roll Express, Robert Gibson, was up that way. And, you know, we saw a lot of stars. Trevor Murdoch, uh Got to meet Patera's daughter, Miss Luscious. And, you know, just a lot of different guys up that way. But it was a uh, close to a thousand mile round trip and uh, sixteen hours on the road. So, have you ever expressed? I mean, you, you wanted to do like you know the, the um, photography stuff, but and you taking pictures of people running around the ring, and uh, that's how you get the name Four Corner Photography. But have you ever interest, actually had an interest of being the guy inside of the ring? When I was younger, I had those aspirations when uh, I could bounce back up like I used to. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, nowadays I'm perfectly content in watching these young men go at it on their own. <laughs> I just try to stay out of the way of some of the bigger men. <laughs> has, there, has there actually come times where when you're there filming or taking pictures of the match, you actually get knocked down by somebody who's trying to get away from their opponent or – do you actually get to get any kind of physically any kind of physical harm done to you? Not purpose, not, well, not on purpose, but I mean more of an accident. Well, that's uh, part of the job. Yes, uh, I've uh, taken a uh, errant back swing from Core Uo, the Cajun, out there in full throttle wrestling in Milton. He didn't see me behind him, and he reared back and caught the picture of his fist coming right at me. Um, wow! I've uh, un- had the unfortunate. Uh, the current to kneel down on uh, Rodney Mack's uh, dog collar, spiked dog collar that had fallen ow. down off of the side of the ring. Uh, it took about a week for those indentures to come out of my kneecap. Um, I have almost been squashed by Minotaur, uh, one of the wrestlers down here for OWE, Old School Wrestling, and West Wego. Um, I've been lucky enough to have been avoided kicks. <laughs> Uh, errant feet coming out through the ring post and everything like that, but I've I've virtually kind of escaped unscathed. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, getting to be that close, you never know what be coming your way. You just gotta be, you gotta move quick and fast. <laughs> oh yeah, but, chairs, um, you never know. <laughs> and have there? I mean, what? I mean, considering this, that you, you you're constantly on the road. And constantly traveling to different cities. I mean, what keeps you going? What keeps you wanting to keep doing this? I mean, you've done it for a number of years. What's to say that you, you, you unless you already do have a team that does it, what's to say that you send somebody, uh, one of your team out there to do it instead of you, and you just stay, stay at your office and help develop the film there in the office instead of traveling, or unless it's something that you enjoy doing? I would, uh, I would definitely have to say for the love of it and basically – to see that one person that's out there in that one federation that would really need that push but doesn't quite get that push and maybe my photos help him or her in their goal to, you know, become a star in the sport. And I would actually love to see a new generation of young photographers come in and take up this kind of thing. It's uh 
like I said, it's almost a dying sport on its own. It's it's a yeah. genre that's now been taken over by cell phones and um, <laughs> For sure. video cameras. You know, I've seen many a person with their laptop and Kindle out there pointing directly at the ring, and I'm like, who, uh, you might want to get up and uh, move around a little. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that one camera angle all night long is not going to make anybody, you know, you're going to get a picture of the man's backside all night long. You know, unfortunately, I do have many of those backside pictures. Yeah, like the one with the Rikishi. <laughs> you, know, you can imagine. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, sometimes I do wind up in the uh, best of spots at the worst of times. <laughs> so, did you and actually... Oh, you, you can say Yeah. Go ahead, Austin. You were talking. I was going to say, so, did you, um... You, you watched, um, you, growing up, you watched, uh, obviously, the AWA Mid, Mid-South. And, um, and you've grown up around, what do you have to say about Mid-South? Because I know they recently actually came out with a DVD. WWE recently came out with it. Legends of Mid-South Wrestling. Well, I've uh, definitely been wanting to pick that one up. Uh, I've uh, definitely read enough of it on the Facebook and had had a little bit of pre-knowledge to the... But, uh, you know, Bill Watts was a... Uh, you know, he's like a demigod in this state. You know, the, uh, the man put wrestling on the map for so many people for so many years. I mean, this was Tri-State before Bill Watts got a hold of it. We were a hotbed of wrestling way back before. So when he turned it all around and got his TV down here, it was just, uh, it was amazing, you know. Um, While Bosch in Houston, God bless his soul, he was another one. He was a visionary. You know, he saw things and he knew how to put it out there for the regular person, you know. Uh, Fritz Von Erich, of course, you know. He plastered WCCW everywhere. You just couldn't get it. You just could not get it. Um, uh, my my love was a little bit on the lower end. I I kind of liked the indies, you know, back then. It was kind of hard to get the TV in certain parts of rural Louisiana. Um, so I was an avid pen pal person, a uh, multitude in the hundreds of pen pals to just, you know, get a little bit of wrestling from Florida, get a little bit of wrestling from Virginia, uh, just a little taste of Tennessee, something like that, you know, just to see a little bit different than from what was being presented in the local mainstream. And back then, uh, do you remember the incident between um, Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler? Oh, vividly. <laughs> I remember being, oh, shoot, maybe junior high watching it on David Letterman when I wasn't supposed to be up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was quite the phenomenon back then to see that little tiny wrestling, you know, station coming out of Memphis, Tennessee with a, a major star. You know, that was something we weren't used to down here in New Orleans or Mid-South until you we, we got to the Superdome or something like that, and you got Andre the Giant to come in. You know, that was our big mega, mega star back then. You know, yeah. JYD owned New Orleans. There's no getting around that. You know, the Freebirds, you know, owned New Orleans. The Rock and Roll Express owned New Orleans, but, you know, nobody could beat having a national TV star on their program. That was just awesome. You know, speaking of the Absolutely. Superdome... Would you actually work at the Superdome, and uh, what exactly do you do? Um, at times, I am a lead chef on uh, some of their uh, suites in the Superdome, and we transfer over to the New Orleans Arena for different various things. And currently, right now, I'm not employed with them, but, you know, it's always a quick call and catch a weekend or two down that way. Will you actually be working um, or be around for WrestleMania 30 next year? Oh, yes, sir, definitely. Uh, I will be representing my JYD home at the Dome shirt uh, (laughs) just to let all the people in WWE know that uh, we had wrestling down here before Vince McMahon was out of Pampers. (laughs) That's right. That's right. They all had the territory days of the uh, Jim Crockett promotion, Mid-South. They had... uh, so many in the name, but there was plenty back then. And I think that's what people are taking advantage of in the sense that there's so many indie territories now 
because they were there weren't that many after events that basically bought out everything. But these little independent right. territories uh, locations are bringing are bringing that that feeling back somewhat, at least in my opinion. Would you agree? Well, we. I would definitely I mean, agree. It's not um, as big as it was back then, but I mean, it, it's going in that direction, maybe. We have definitely got to pull in the right direction. Uh, you're looking at over the last four years, you've seen a resurgence from where you've only had a handful of independent wrestling companies to now we're over 15 different companies in just a little over under three states. Um, each promotion giving their fans what they deserve, which is a real good show for their dollar. Um, most of the people that, you know, we work with over in Beaumont, we have uh, Hurricane Pro Wrestling, that's Curtis Stratus and uh, Jared Wayne. Um, some of these guys over that way are just, you know, really pulling back that resurgence from the Texas rest. Um, they're, they're doing it big in a, in a big way. Um, they got A.J. Rush and one of the, one of the top guys from back in the day from uh, Tugbo Taylor's way was um, Cowboy uh, Justin Walker. You know, and I'm sure he's raising those guys up and keeping an old-school mentality with them. Um, when we talk about old school, we have uh, Full Throttle Wrestling out in Elton. Uh, they're at the Cachada out that way and in the reservation. And you have Teddy Nall and Moonshine Mantel and Core UO, the Cajun. And they're bringing up young guys, and they've got a, a young guy named Matthew Jacobs. He's getting a rise up pretty, pretty soon, and... And yeah, we see a lot of people over that way, uh, Hambone, Sean Lee, he's a fan favorite everywhere he goes. And these guys are definitely working their hardest to, you know, get their name out there and put that old school wrestling mentality back into the paying customer's lap. And with your pictures, it obviously definitely helps. You know, it helps them get more of that notoriety out there to other, other uh, organizations that might be interested possibly. Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody that, you know, knows their wrestling and they know their wrestling lore, you know, it, it, it's generation to generation. It's handed down. It's handed down. I mean, if you want to harken back to the old days when Grandpa would tell stories around the fireplace, kids, Google fireplace, you know, you would hear about guys you would never see, but you would want to go out to learn about that person, you know. It's just that it's a it's a drive. That's for sure. Did you actually get the chance to work with? Um, um, you meant I think, and I think you might have mentioned it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, with Mr. Bruce Tharp and his NWA. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I had been wanting to head out that way to the shows in Cypress, Texas. Um, I do believe they have a real spectacular show coming up with a Japanese invasion where they're bringing in four to five top Japanese wrestlers over. And um, that's coming up, I believe, October 18th, Friday, in uh, Houston. Uh, definitely wanting to get over that way and meet with everybody. Uh, Tony Brooklyn, who I understand is uh, pretty much the head honcho over that way, is a New Orleans boy, born and bred. So might, he might get a chance to get a Lufalot or a po' boy off of me. <laughs> What was it like actually getting the chance to meet, because uh, you had mentioned it earlier, um, Paul Bear, Mr. Percy Pringle? How did it come about that you met him? Oh, jeez, that was uh, through, um, I was going to have to say, Wildcat Sports with the Luke Hawk um, and Miss Della Walker. Um, they put on some real good shows, and Luke's family with, uh, you know, Paul Bear and... And we would go up to um, Power Slam Wrestling in Mississippi up in Macomb with um, Wes Adams and Reginald Matthews and a bunch of the fellows up that way. And, you know, he was just helping out uh, a young upstart, two young upstart uh, federations. And, you know, he, he came out and the people came out to support him and, and, and Lou came out to support all the people of Power Slam and Wildcat Sports. You know, with um, Paul Bearer, he said things like, um, we wouldn't have independent wrestling. It's when independent wrestling is basically the ground roots of what the you know, WWE is, or what TNA is, the Ring of well, Ring of Honor is independent wrestling. But um, how it, we they wouldn't have the stars that they have today without independent wrestling. 
Oh, well, that's for sure. I mean, you have to have your farm to raise up from the root to the fruit in this business. There you go. Um, if it wasn't for the young guys willing to get out there and she's in Mississippi, I know they're putting their butts on the sling for maybe under $15 a night to go out there and perform for their people that come out there and support them, their families, their friends, you know, and for people to travel for just so little nowadays on such a small level, it's, it's kind of crazy, but, you know, they get out there diligently do it night after night, and, you know, I give it up to them for that. You know, some people make a little bit more than the others on the totem pole, but, you know, for everybody that's ever got to get in their car and travel, you know, it's, it, it's a wear and tear on your body just as much as anything else. And who were some of your favorite uh, wrestling managers growing up, being a fan? I know that back back then, or back well, years ago, because I was still a kid myself, in the late 80s, early 90s, um, who were some of your favorite wrestling managers growing up? Oh, I would definitely, without a doubt, have to say Gary Hart, out of Houston, Choice. in the uh, Dallas area. Uh, Skandar Akbar, of course. I mean, there was nothing like Devastation Incorporated. Never will be duplicated. Um, Percival Pringle, he had a beautiful stable back in the day. And I'm, I would be remiss not to add beautiful Bobby Brain Heenan. I mean, that man had almost every single top wrestler known to mankind out that way. Uh, yes, I was did. a little bit more in tune to the lady valets that we used to have back then. <laughs> like, you know... You know, I would be remiss to say Miss Linda for Adrian Street. Didn't care too much for his flauntiness, but uh, I, I sure got an eye full of hers. <laughs> and, uh, Missy Hyatt was pretty popular back then, too. Missy Hyatt, Miss uh, Nicola Roberts, everybody knows. Uh, Baby Doll, oh, yeah, all of the, all the young ladies back then. And, you know, sensational Sherry, God bless her, you know. When she was out yep. in Louisiana wrestling and doing her thing, she made a one-piece bathing suit look darn good. <laughs> she was definitely, a, in my opinion, Sherry was definitely one of the the few that were so, were so far ahead of their time. Had they been able to perform in this generation, they would have definitely been a top star. But um, she was such the person that just came so you know, her her way of doing things, her attitude, her she was just that good. In just my opinion, but. Oh yeah, she she had that certain aura, that certain it, that certain magnetism that I'm finding kind of hard to see in the young ladies that we have coming up today. I mean, it's something that you know that's that's definitely missing in our ringside, you know, the aura of the of the card. You know, I miss the days of the ladies in the dresses coming out and Southern belling us to death. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Nowadays, you got uh, some a little, a, maybe a small taste of the old school. When you have, of course, uh, <clears throat> you have Paul Heyman and, and Zeb Coulter, Dutch Mantel. They're out there doing their thing a little bit. I mean, they, they, I get the feeling they started to feel maybe the managers were needed a little bit more now than than they thought because a lot of the guys don't have the ability to talk very well to get their message across when they're when they're being interviewed. So they give them a mouthpiece like Heyman or or, or Zeb Coulter or. The other managers, they, well, they tried to do Ricardo, but I'm not really, he's not considered old school, but you, you get my drift. Well, I hearken back to the day of Slick Rick. You know, <laughs> I would love to see a resurgence of Teddy Long coming back, bring back Slick Rick. Somebody put Butch Reed in a suit and bring him back. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, he was good. He was definitely You know, without good. managers. Like, they wouldn't have, um, uh, I mean, Paul Heyman, definitely a guy that has taken many people from, you know, um, uh, a, a person that has, wasn't really seen that much to a person like CM Punk, for example, who has been WWE champion for, I mean, one of the longest reigns in history. And, you know, that's, what, that's why manager, managers are needed. He's, like, he's, he's done that with many people. Like, you know, Curtis Axel has been really successful in the past um, months. Now he's in with Ryback uh, most recently. Yeah, these uh, younger guys, these second-generation stars that have come up in the business have definitely, you know, showed that they're ready for the limelight. They're they're ready to reach up and grasp out for that secondary, you know, ring. Uh, with or without a manager nowadays on TV, it really doesn't seem to matter that much. Uh, I do notice on the independents, the managers 
are, you know, hard working. They're they're ready to get out there for their man. They're ready to do what they have to do. But the the day of the manager actually handling the business is is so far gone. Absolutely. And if the opportunity uh, presented itself to you to you know say that they were to need a commentator for one of the shows, would that some would that be ever something that you might be ever interested in doing trying? Or I have been that? asked. Well, well, I've been asked quite a few times, and it's 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 kind of hard to want to not do what I do around the ring and and make sure that we're getting those good pictures and making sure that we're capturing those moments that the fans remember and turn around and, you know, be able to do a play-by-play color commentary, something like that. You know, I I, I have a running commentary in my head during the whole match (laughs) to begin (laughs) with. You know, I've I've always thought I should maybe mic mic my brain and, (laughs) you know, and so you were actually um, in the I mean, what was in the you know, the early nineties, whatever um, late nineties, middle nineties, whatever it is. You actually attended the, some of the first ECW shows. Oh yeah, on their Southern Loop down here. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. We I came all the way out of Houston to come see them over here in uh, West Wego at the Alario Center. They ran a couple of shows down this way, uh, TV tapings. And got to follow them across back to Texas, and it was, I was surprised the Texas crowd really hadn't caught on to ECW yet because uh, it hadn't really been on TV other than the Nashville Network. And uh, <laughs> the only time they ever promoted the show was during the show itself. So it, the turnout was kind of less than stellar, but you know, the folks that did show up were diehard fans from all around Houston and Humble and Texas City and Galveston. So, you know, let me work in Lamarck and uh, Beaumont out that way because there was a bunch of folks that came in and filled up for them. But, you know, yeah, it was a it was a chance to see some of the top guys on TV in the, in the third-ranked division, you know, and see people that we hadn't only got a chance to see before. And if people want to get more familiar with the kind of work that you do, like uh, <clears throat> to see for themselves, like a website or a Facebook page, um, how can how can uh, wrestling fans keep up with what you're doing? Check out your pictures uh, and so forth. Do you have a, do you have a website or a Facebook page? Um, currently working on the website, um, having a couple of issues and just figuring out how to amass so much information from so many different. Uh, federations and keeping true to each federation, uh, we do know that our wrestlers like to move around a little bit, and so I don't want to step on toes and have double photos and whatnot of, and trying to confuse the fans that wouldn't really know that a lot of these guys travel. Um, as far as um, Facebook is where I really like to keep and store all my albums, that way everybody can get a chance to get a hold of them and look at the pictures and uh, basically that's facebook.com slash John J-O-N Paul P-A-U-L Luis L-U-I-S dot Blanc L-E-B-L-A-N-C and I normally do a lot of my posting pardon sir? Did you happen to open up a Twitter or an Instagram at all or is that something that's I had it one right. time, and boy, dude, let me tell you, it, it 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 got to be hard to keep up with a lot of stuff. <laughs> but um, I do most like everybody. Facebook is a very good medium for what we do here, and which is you know promoting. Um, and my Facebook dot com slash John J O N Paul P A U L dot LeBlanc L E B L A N C dot one is where I post pretty much all the federations that I'm going to go see and who's tweets my interest this week to pull me in a certain direction. Nice. And guys, if you want to actually see what he has to offer, you know, every all the pictures he took, I mean, he has over thousands of pictures. I mean, well, he has a lot of stuff from when we started, like, um, a few years ago, I don't know, um, 2010 maybe? 
when you, when yes, you, sir. In 2010, all the way up into 2013, if you want to see and catch an eye of what's happened in Louisiana, definitely check that out. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm curious, how did, you meet, uh, how did you two meet? Oh, that would be through um, Heat Championship Wrestling down in Homer, which is uh, Austin's hometown. Mm-hmm. We uh, started uh, back with Elite Championship uh, who for about two and a half years now. They've been running some really good shows down there in Homer, bringing in some of the top names from New Orleans and uh, beyond. Uh, yep. they, they have been instrumental in, you know, recently by acquiring some talent from Wildcat Sports and merging a little bit. And these guys have gone and got with traditional championship wrestling all the way up there in Arkansas with Matt Riviera, and they've been relaying talent back and forth. We've got some great Louisiana wrestling ambassadors working for us right now, getting the word out, believe me. Lou Cox and his boys have been training uh, recently, Buku Dow has seen TV time up there in TCW, Purple Haze. Um, you're looking at uh, John Saxon, Steve Antony, and Scott Phoenix. These guys are basically putting wrestling on the map right now for Louisiana. And Scott Phoenix is actually the current TCW World of champion. That he is, sir, and well-deserved. That man is, uh, John Saxon has been around the loop, uh, all the way from Texas. I mean, there's probably 30, 40 federations the man was for in over the years and, and work to better the federations, work to raise these young guys up to where they want to see something else, you know, when they want to get out there and take the world by the horns, you know. You know, speaking of, of TCW, former TCW World Wide Champion, former WWE, superstar Lance Hoyt will actually be at Elite Championship Wrestling this coming Sunday. That is correct. I am looking forward to seeing that man. Uh, no he doubt. has he has turned Texas wrestling on its ear from back in the day. Everybody might remember him as Rock from TNA. Some people remember him as Vance Archer from WWE, but he's still just the same old Lance Hoyt to us guys down here. You know, he's a strong one in the ring, and he's another one that wants to see people rise up and become something in this sport. And he's actually been, he's been around a lot. I mean, he was in recently in um, in New Japan. Yes, they I'm teamed like, up with Dean Hart Smith, and they have been uh, quite the duo of terror up that way. They have got some power moves out of this world. I have been uh, recently on a real big Japanese Pure Riso kick with the females, and doing a watching a lot of Japanese wrestling up that way, and Lance and the guys over that way. They've been They've been putting a hurting on them boys, that's for sure. And you know those Japanese guys, I mean, they are hard to hit. I mean, if you go to Japan, like everybody talks about it, they hit hard and they don't look back. I mean, they are, I mean, it's really inter- it's interesting to watch all the time. You know, when uh, Lanson and uh, D.H. Smith actually won the tag titles, I, I think they're, they're still holding on to them, if I'm not mistaken. They might have lost them. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but they were tag team champions at a time. I think they might be currently right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I know the work that he's been doing with TCW has been stellar. Um, we saw him recently with GCW and the big Rock and Roll Express tour that they had, uh, Gulf Coast Wrestling recently. They uh Plaquemines and um, Abbeville and New Iberia area. Uh, Lance was in tip-top shape. Uh, he, he, he went up against uh, Minotaur, Brian Falcon, and it was... And it just seemed that it was like one of those things that that match right there was two big men in the ring. And they say never put two big men in the ring, but these two guys, they went at it tooth and nail. And it was good old-fashioned wrestling like fans like to see. No doubt. (laughs) I also have to take a moment to mention a little project that Austin and yourself have actually, Mr. LeBlanc, have taken part in doing. And it was creating a little flyers for our show that that's been helping attract people to come listen to the show, and it's actually been helping. And I have to say, very from the bottom of my heart, sir, thank you so much for doing that, Austin. You got a creative mind, and we appreciate you helping out and getting our name out there to be for people to take a listen to the show. Well, that's no problem. I mean, you guys do what you do, and you do it for the fans. It's not for any kind of glory. It's not for any kind of recognition. 
you're out there, you're providing these people with what they need to know, and that's knowledge. And I have no problem helping y'all guys get y'all's name out there. Um, like I said, I, my travels through 15 different promotions, you know, I like to make sure your flyers are out there just in case that one or two fan just wants to take that extra step. That's right. Uh, you can think the creative genius behind Austin here, he, you know, he's just like, you know, yeah, he's patting himself on the back. He did a great yeah. job. He created something pretty pretty creative, I have to say. Oh, yeah. You know, try, he, try. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, no, I said I, I, said I, I try. I, um, I do my best at what I, you know, at what I do. I mean, you just <laughs> amplify it a lot. <laughs> what if Austin had actually wanted to accompany you on maybe one of your trips to, to help out with a photography? Would that would oh, you ever have? Believe me, I've, 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 had, I've, ex, I've extended that uh, branch of friendship <laughs> out that way for him for a while. You know, um, the guy hit through that way home on my over towards Beaumont and uh, Elton and Lafayette when I'm over that way for down South Championship Wrestling with Jazz and Rodney or if I'm over that way with uh, – full throttle, you know, and any time a Gulf Coast wrestling show comes up, you know, I'm always trying to get him get out of the house a little bit. He's going to he's gonna spread his wings here soon, and he's going to get to fly with the big dog here pretty soon. No doubt. No <laughs> or doubt. fly with the big bird. I, I can't figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, did you have any further questions for Mr. LeBlanc, Austin? Um, uh, besides that, I mean, thank you for, I mean, for doing this. People don't, I mean, people that uh, take pictures don't really get the credit that's due, and uh, you do a lot, a lot of stuff, and uh, you do it for free, obviously, and you, and you, I think that that you love to do it, and that's the reason why you continue to do it. Well, well I figure with the pro promo photo pics that we give for all the hard workers out there, you know, they hold up one of my four-corner photography signs, they show me a little support, and I think that's a good payday. You know, these guys are out yeah. there busting their butt once again for little to nothing. You know, take my pictures, make some promo photos, get them to your fans, your friends, your family. You know, that's what we're here for. You know, it's something that everybody can enjoy. And you're, you have a memory that you can cherish forever. Amen to that. Absolutely. Um well, on behalf of Austin, Mr. LeBlanc, we thank you so much for taking time to sit down and chat with us about what it is you do with the, with your company and where you've been and what you're looking to do and all the good stuff in between and all the legends that you've gotten to meet over the years. You have a great you, – you've definitely had quite the, the ride, so to speak, and I don't think the ride's over going to be over anytime soon. Oh, no, sir. Uh, with a little bit of exercise and a couple of rims and uh, tires, and make sure that the creeks don't rise, I think I'll be there at a wrestling ring near you. There you go. Well, we hope you enjoy your night, sir. And, again, thank you so much for taking time to join us. Thank you, thank you. Felix, oh, Felix Austin, I appreciate it once again, you know, from the bottom of my heart. You know, you guys do an awesome job getting the word out there for all these people. You know, so uh, we thank you. Not a problem. We enjoy what we do. All right, gentlemen, y'all have a great evening. See you Sunday. You too now. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. See you Sunday.